Summer school has been emotional. Chin up, suck it up, get on with it. Three weeks ago, 11 boys whose behaviour was threatening their futures in mainstream education enrolled at a summer school run by head teacher Stephen Drew. We're going to respect each other. What is the matter with you? We're not going to swear. <laughs> and we are going to make sure that we turn up on time. So far, Mr Drew has tackled bad language. You do not speak to your mum like that. Sorry, mum. Fighting. Oh, Jesus. And a fundamental lack of respect. Leave me alone! That's not good, is it? He's also held parents to account for their shortcomings. <coughs> Come on, man, you Does he know absolutely that you completely disapprove of it? Three weeks in, yeah! he's had some major breakthroughs. Well done, Tom. Well done, Tom. I've been teaching 15 years now, and actually, that's got to be one of my top moments. Now, with just a few days to go until they return home. It's time for Mr Drew and his team to start preparing the boys for their return to their own schools. And he's decided on the <laughs> ultimate final exam. Well, can someone else do this? A family camping trip. <laughs> it's the final week. Soon the boys will be returning to their own schools and the families will be going it alone. It will be sad to be leaving, like, the kind of friends I've now made. I will kind of miss that safety of being here in an environment where people don't judge you and going into uncertainty where I'm just not sure how I'm going to cope and, and be. Me and Alan have learned absolutely loads in these last three weeks, and it's really scary because we're going to have to go it alone. Really, really scary. I'm excited because my cousin has come to visit. I don't get to see him very often. He is a pirate. The first class of the morning is English, and Mr Grist has set the boys a creative task. Boys, you have 15 minutes to start designing your mobile phone for pirates. It's a weapon as well feature, as a phone. Right? But while most of them seem up for the challenge... Tiny bullet shooter where you press a button and it... Brilliant. Max C's already run up the white flag. So, Max, what things could your mobile phone do? You could do anything. I can't do it anyway. You can do it, Max. I can't do it. For Max, the youngest boy in the group, giving in too easily has been an issue ever since summer school began. Resilient, Max. Max does suffer clearly from a very low level of self esteem. He doesn't believe he can do things. But I can't do it. I'm not good at anything. Can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? That's starting to stop. He keeps telling himself, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. He needs some serious kind of like kind of motivational coaching. At your best, you can do this. You can do it. You'll be so proud of yourself. I mean it, Max, you can do this. This isn't an excuse, this is you not working, okay? But you can do it, Max. I'm not letting you do less than your best. Nice one. Mr. Grist's pep talk works wonders. That's cool, isn't it? Yes. And while Max knuckles down, along the corridor, the parents are discussing the effect their firm new approach is having on the boys. This is a bit that I'm finding really, really difficult, is the night time, getting mm. them to go to bed, because they're just really, like, screaming and whining at me. I'm not surprised oh. to hear that they are fighting. What do you think that fight is about anybody? Because they don't want to lose control, do they? They're fighting to hold on to what they've always had, yeah, their way. Yeah. But initially, it's like, whoa, hold on a minute, yeah. this is different. And I, I can assure you, if you hold fast, it will diminish. It's a battle. Because who is going to let go of what they've had without a fight? In English, the boys have a visitor. Oh. Arr! Ivy Captain Grist! Hi, Mr Grist! Captain Grist! Captain... I'm a pirate. He's a boring English dude. I don't know where he is. I want to I see some piratey... piratey phone presentations. Three weeks ago, many of these boys refused to stay in a classroom. Today, as they step up to present their designs, it's a different story. Do you like swords? 
are. Because my sword has your best phone embedded in the palm of it. And Max is in swashbuckling form. It's got a shoot-out poison dart and a games whack-a-shark how to kill a pirate, gold storage, pop-out rum. Yeah. Very good. I like that. There were some great ideas in there. It's Friday afternoon, and in a field in a small corner of Essex, an invasion is underway. Come on then, mate. Go on, straight ahead. Keep going. Mr Drew's planned something special for the weekend. A camping trip for the whole group. Dominic, do you want to come next to us? Can we do next to you? When the boys arrived at summer school, the teachers didn't know what had hit them. Shut and the idea of trusting them on a weekend away would have been unthinkable. That drama session I had is probably the most unpleasant educational experience I've ever had. But three weeks down the line, they've made giant strides. And Mr Drew's happy to set them loose on the great outdoors. He plans to use the time away to see how the families cope when left to their own devices. I can't do nothing. But the sudden independence seems to have thrown them. Shall I get the man to help us? Well, I don't know what I'm bloody doing. Do you think I do? Just leave it like this. Do you think I bloody do? Ow! Ow! I'm trying to think of everything, you know, that I've learned, trying to put it into play, and... They've got a shot coming, because there's a lot of things changing when we get back home for definite, because there's no way I'm going to go back to the way it was. Quite deliberately, I'm aiming for tonight and then in tomorrow to do it different to the other stuff. We've been very, very hands-on as time has gone on, quite rightly, and we've needed to. But actually, the aim for this is for them as families to really do it themselves. Or really... oh, can someone else do this? So myself and Mark and Dom will be elsewhere and we'll just watch, watch from afar. With the tents finally up, the families soon start to embrace the great outdoors. <laughs> well. At the moment, we're quite quiet and calm, really, but like lots of things involving these kids and families, it's kind of on the edge at times. It, things can just, just go. <laughs> Spotting the first signs of trouble, Michelle's quick to intervene. Right, come and play a game with me. Yeah, until one of you gets hurt. Now, we yeah. Where once the situation might have escalated, this time Michelle is determined to stay firm. Jake, let go of him. That's Joe. Joe, get off him. This is going to end in tears, and I'm not prepared for the fight and arguments afterwards. Get me off! Stop it. Right, stand still. Stand still. Stand still. <laughs> Zane's just literally slapped me hard and I just had to walk away. Now we're taking back control. He's not a happy bunny. When we go home, it's, it's in place, it's staying. We just need to bring Zane up to speed to stop fighting us. Well, we didn't trim him up, he just fell over. We should have... that little bastard blame And nobody's swearing, seriously, Bye. stop it. Come on. Wait, enough. It's not going to happen in four weeks, but it is going to happen. As evening approaches, Clark's trying his hand at some hardcore camping skills. I'm building a fire, even though they don't allow it. This is my first. And probably my last. Because my mum and dad never take me camping. I usually don't take Clark camping. He mourns, but... I'll leave him behind, cos he's just a pin. I'm getting out! Clark has ADHD. He's made some good progress at summer school. Do 20 times 10. Becomes 200, right? Yeah. Then do 7 times 2. But his behaviour has given his parents plenty to think about. Really? You want to try that, do you? But while Helen's become hot on consistent discipline... Excuse me, can you go and pick that up now? Mechanic Keith has remained more relaxed. Oi! Hey! Helen will always tend to 
react much stronger than what I will. Oi! You! It would be nice to be able to exercise a little bit more assertiveness and, and likes of that, but I'm always conscious of treading near that fine line with push and clap over the edge. Dry hair does the best. Now that will be a good fire. Clark, this is quite a good spot here. Yeah. Held there for a couple of minutes. Don't touch it to any of the wood. There's plenty of heat there. No, you're touching the wood. And you've set it on fire. Blow it out and you just delete it. I'm of the opinion that really boys like this should be given the opportunity to do these things. They've got time tonight to build the fire, to toast the marshmallows on it. Absolutely fantastic. Three weeks ago, maybe a concern, but you know what, we've come so far. Today has actually been quite amazing because we had the massive bonfire and the tents, because I like camping. Wicked, wicked. Everybody's enjoying it. Everybody in the campsite wants to see the fire. With everyone on their best behaviour, the families settle in for a relaxing evening. <laughs> but having entertained the whole camp, Clark finds it hard to stop. You need to walk away now, Clark. Clark, you Ma need to walk away. What happened? Did I see you put that on there and go on to bed. Make the right choice, Clark. Right, bed. 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 Move it. I'm not going to touch it again. No, I don't care. I'll give you a chance. Give Move me one it. more. Yeah, I've made the right choice now, or tomorrow, Clark, you will not be joining in in any of the activities. Clark, move it. Sure. Move it, because if I have to get your dad, I mean it. Get me dad, then. OK. And you go and get him, please. We've told him a thousand times I want him in bed, because he's, he's been naughty. Clark, that's a really, really dangerous thing you're playing with there. Have you never heard about playing with fire? Because mm, he's no second chances. Your mum made it clear that you were told what to do, you ignored her, so now you need to go with your dad. Correct decision, yep. Clark. Good luck. Correct decision. Let's swear, go that's off it. my. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no need to swear, Clark. This is the name of the game with uh, kids with the ADHD because he's enjoying himself that much sure. that you're. Uh, Clark, can you be here, please? Can you be here? Oi, you're going to you're going to have to, to apologise to your mother, mind, because she was only looking out for you and the other kids. Yeah, I don't want to come down on them too hard, you know, for the old swearing or a little bit behaviour here and there. Uh, Helen might have a slightly different approach from me, but that's my philosophy on it anyway. It's morning, and the campsite is beginning to stir but with some notable faces missing. Aston decides to offer a helping hand. Sorry about what? that, Mr Grace. <laughs> no, not. What? Mr Drew split the party into two groups, who'll take turns doing the activities he's arranged. But while the others start to head off... Shut up! It becomes clear that Clark's bad behaviour has continued into the morning, and Helen has told him he won't be taking part. He's not do as he's told. Yeah. Trying to light the fire, and then he's gone over and he's trying. He's filled his wellies full to the brim of water, which he needs them for this afternoon. Then he's swearing at this. I'm not just not having it. I've just had enough. Unfortunately, she has kind of backed herself into a bit of a corner where she went straight to the nuclear option of you're not taking part in any of the activities all day within the space of five minutes. So she has sort of made it rather difficult for herself. However, she's, she hasn't then backed down. And if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. No, no, this is the problem I've got. If he can't be trusted over there and a number of people has told him, stop lighting the fire, right, and he still goes back and doing more, 
how can I trust them going canoeing or and doing archery and things like that? I can't. I think you're absolutely right. To stand your ground. Uh, the only thing I always say is you need, you need to find a way where he can get it right. And I tell you what, he wants to say sorry. He wants to sort it out, but he can't quite bring himself to make that step. Mr. Drew suggests a possible compromise. The session lasts about two hours, so he misses the first half an hour. That makes a point to him. He learns, he sorts it out, he does the right thing, and then we move on. So I'm, I'm going to leave you with it. I'm going to join the others, but no, you guys, you're doing absolutely the right thing. But his words appear to have fallen on deaf ears. We might get off in about ten minutes, but hopefully. Wait, at this precise moment, I don't think he should mm. go straight away. Mm. He hasn't learnt. Just give him a break. Just see how he gets on. Oh, like every every other well, break. That all right. Do you want to sit round here for two hours then? I say one thing. You do the complete opposite. You're basically he's getting away with with his naughty behaviour. Getting away with it. You let him away with it. I'm in mean, fancy dress today, as you as you might have noticed. But one last piece of the puzzle. Might lack like it. Yeah. Just in case I get a clonk on the head. Down by the lake, the kayaking's underway. Uh, Emma, we're gonna crash! But Joe's in two minds about taking the plunge. Well, I promise you, if you go into the water, what I'll do is I'll jump in and I'll get out. I'm going to give it a go. Yeah? You need to go first, and I'll come back to you. OK. I'm coming in after Mr Valente. Good lad, Joe. I'm not going to let you fall in. I oh, know. There you go. Help me! At the archery, the boys have been entrusted with their own weapons. And Keith and Clark have made it to class. Keep it nice and straight. That's it, wonderful, well done. Clark's having his go now. So how have you resolved it? Because obviously when I left you about sort of 20 minutes ago, you were still the rest of it. So how have we, how have we got here, I suppose? Um, I think I'm sort of like just giving them a second chance. Okay. You know, it's not so much of resolved it. Right. You know, I'm just, I just thought, well, it's better than sitting around in the tent for two hours and missing right. the games. Okay. Um, Are you absolutely convinced you've done the right thing, mate? Yeah. Yeah. Done the right thing. Okay. We Let's will see. I'll tell you what. I hope you're right. You've just completely um, undermined oh, everything that I've done, Keith. No, what I'm it saying. No, you have, Keith. No. I'm sick to death of it. I we said one thing and then completely. I didn't want to be sitting at the. Tent I wasn't going to do that. I wanted two hours. to. No, I wasn't going to give him for two hours. It was just for the time being. But it wouldn't cost. You went, come on, son, let's go off. Well, I didn't want him to miss the, the, the games. Well, 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 he should miss the games if he's not, eh? <laughs> but, but it's like, it's just. just Dad, it's just like good. Out. It's just like what, what your tip says good cop, bad cop, in it. I'm always the um, bad cop. Well, I thought we might be able to have a, a, yeah, have a, a pep talk with him afterwards. But Keith's approach has backfired. <laughs> That's so funny, Clark. <laughs> uh, uh, I was hoping you would have went like that. <laughs> funny at all. Oh. <laughs> Not funny. Clark and his family may be unhappy campers, but it seems they're in a minority. And Emma, who rarely takes the twins on trips back home, is a convert. I'd like to definitely do more stuff like this because I do enjoy doing stuff like this as well. So, and they enjoy it. Hopefully, in the future, you know, it'll be something we could do a little bit more of. It feels really good, actually, the fact he's joining in and he's having fun. He's not moaning, there's no swearing, he's enjoying himself. And actually, it's quite nice because I can actually look at him and smile. And he's doing it with his dad too, so it's good. I went kayaking and it's been really fun. I like to spend time with dad. Because he's always funny. Mmm, oh. <laughs> yummy. Better than breakfast. Family life should be about celebrating together, crying together, commiserating with each other and actually enjoying each other's company. It doesn't have to be perfect. Things like this this weekend, this is what families should do. For the final few days of summer school, the families slip back into their now familiar routines. 
you getting up then? Because um, time's running out. You need to have your breakfast before assembly. You gonna get up? While Mr Drew has devoted the last four weeks to changing the boys' behaviour, his teachers have focused on their schoolwork. Oh, yes! Perfect! Yes, good! Helping them reach new heights in English. Table three, Aston Zane totally getting involved. Science. I've got one! I've got one! Is it a black widow? No. Hello! PE. Yeah. You could have given up there, but you didn't. You kept on fighting all the way to the end. Brilliant. And maths. Multiply your total by six, so... 66. Yep, I've got this in the bag. But as summer school nears the end, Mr Drew wants the boys to think about why they came here in the first place. Gentlemen, we have come a very long way in our three weeks and three days, and obviously Friday is going to be our special day to mark the end of our four weeks together. Therefore, boys, what we are going to do today is we're going to make some statements about what we're going to do. We are going to design our own poster that your parents will be able to put up at home for you to see and for them to see. Are you going to speak nicely to them or are you going to do as they are? Not go, ah, to not scream and shout. I will not swear, I will learn to resolve problems, I'll work in all of my lessons, yeah? I will not swear when I am angry. Okay. I will listen to the instructions of my teachers. You are a star, Tom. Meanwhile, the parents are preparing their own pledges. A pledge is a promise to do something, to give something, or to refrain from doing something. Is that what you want to put? Yeah, yes. I think my first one, not to be grumpy. As long as I am always grumpy. Get to know the young man that he is, oh. rather than just treat him as oh, that irritant that's in the room. <laughs> yeah. And it seems their argument on the camping trip may have acted as a wake-up call for Keith and Helen. It's hard in the beginning, and you feel like giving up, but you've got to keep on going. But at the end of the day, he is going to realise that my mum and dad has learnt a lot massive down here. <clears throat> he's going to kick, he's going to scream, he's going to shout, and at the end of the day, he'll understand and there'll be a better future. Cos he'll respect you more, cos the bone wounds will be there. You know, we've got to try it. If you want to, if you want to get change, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a ball of a brick in the wall, isn't it? It is. Over four weeks of summer school, Mr Drews encouraged the parents to reflect on how family life can change for the better. And for Keith, the penny has finally dropped. Back at home, it would tend to be like, I would say, 90% of the time it would be Helen that would be telling them off. Helen's at the, the far end of the scale from me, she's at the, sort of the, you know, the short fuse end, I'm at the laid back end, so I sort of, we can sort of bring it somewhere near the middle. That would be nice if we could uh, arrive there. That might be a much better idea, I think. Soon, all of the families will be tested as they return to their homes and the start of a new school term. But not before some final words from Mr Drew. First week or so, we had lots of this from you. I changed my behaviour and a very special graduation ceremony. I turned into a dragon, my eyes glowing red, the power of the gods in me. Four weeks ago, 11 boys and their parents set foot in Mr Drew's office for the first time. There have been challenges and triumphs along the way. And now they're back, with thoughts turned to the future. Right, Rex. What are you going to take back from our time here when you go back to your school again in September? What might you do a bit differently? I'm going to leave my old body here and take my new one over back home and... OK, what's different about the new one? The new one's got a nicer max. Joe, when you go back to your school in September and you go into year five, how is it going to be different to year four? Yeah, how are you going to do Right. So what are you going to do so as to behave better? It's just teachers don't swear, don't give them much. I think we still have got a way to go yet, but um, I'm seeing changes mm. in them. Mm. So I think slowly we'll mm. get there. So I'll tell you something I've really noticed over time. First week or so, we had lots of this from you, and then just dropped away. Yeah, because you got used to me. Mm, I think as you change your behaviour. I change my behaviour. I think you change your behaviour. Look at the nods. 
from those two there. Next in are Clark, Keith and Helen. Clark's crossed swords with Mr Drew on a number of occasions and the head has an important message. The worry I have for you, Clark, is that when you go off to a secondary school, I want it to work for you. I desperately want it to work for you. I look at you, Clark, and I see this potentially amazing young person. My worry, Clark, is that if you reject people who don't do things the way you want it done, if you reject people who don't follow your version of things and you're not prepared to compromise, then actually, Clark, things won't work. When you go to secondary school, there's going to be teachers like Mr Drew who, who is going to be strict with you and you're not going to like it, but at the end of the day, that is what teachers are about. They've got to be strict. Mum and Dad has learned massively how to deal with you. But you said that everything that Dad's learned over the four weeks has gone out the window. But he's back on track. But it's no, 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 but he's back on track with us. And and when we get home, there's going to be rules put in place, and you're going to stick to them. No, you're going to stick to them rules. And if them rules aren't stuck to, then then there's consequences of them for not sticking to them. And he's going to hate us for it. He hate us for it. But at the end of the day, he'll get over it. And it'll be worth it in the long run. It'll be worth it in the but long run. But it'll be hard. Tom, who has ADHD, has been in the head's office more than most. Now it's time for one last meeting with Mr Drew. Tom, I think it's fair to say that there are lots of things that you've done really well. Yeah. And that you have managed to keep a lid on things. But we still do have times when you don't. So the swearing bit, you have come so far. I, that's something to be really proud of. And I'm really proud of you for I'm that. I'm really proud of myself as well, because I think... Um... That um, I've improved on my behaviour a lot because I was I, I went off on a bad start, mm -hmm. but then I must started working good, and now I understand that my mum's been a lot stricter but a lot calmer, mm -hmm. and I'll understand the consequences from it. Mm -hmm. Tom, shall I tell you what worries me? So I'm going to be I'm going to be pretty honest with you, and you know that I care, and you know you can trust me, don't you? What worries me is sometimes. When it goes wrong, it just goes so wrong. So when you go to your new school in September, you have to let them help you with whatever they want to help you with. And even if you don't like it, even if they say to you, right, Tom, I want you to talk to this person, to that person, I want you to go here and go there, you have to let them help you, Tom. Yeah? There's a lot of potential for you. But you've got to make it happen, OK? So you're glad you came, Christina? Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's the best thing that's ever we've ever done as a family and okay. for Tom. Who would be proud of you, Tom, if he could see you now? My dad. I think your dad would be really proud of you, Tom. Yeah. I think he would. The family's time at summer school is at an end. To mark the occasion, Mr Drew's organised a graduation ceremony in the local village hall. Summer school has been emotional. Summer school has seldom been easy. Summer school has been relentless. And summer school, I hope at the end, has been worth it. I've actually had to pull every behaviour management strategy that I've ever learned out of the hat when it comes to this experience. But you know what? It's been the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. What I really, really hope is that when they go home, that the seeds we've planted here really, really will grow and that they'll have a much better family unit. It's been exhausting, exhilarating and... insane. Good morning everyone and welcome to our graduation. It's a very special moment for all of us. It's a special moment for you as our students, it's a special moment for parents. And our first week, as we all know, was full of lots and lots of challenges, lots and lots of difficulties. We had lots of tearing our hair out moments. We had lots of times when we had parents who were standing and saying, oh, really, I'm not sure I can do this. But I boys believe completely that any of us can do anything that we choose to do. 
inside every single one of you 11 boys is a truly outstanding person who can make a difference to themselves, to their family, to their community and to their world. And the whole purpose of our summer school has been about opening doors and showing what we can do. The teachers also have some final words of encouragement for the boys. The most important thing from sport is this. You gain so many transferable skills. And for me, the biggest one of all, and you know what I'm going to say, it begins with a letter R. Resilience. Resilience. If you can take one word away from this experience, is it's OK to fail, boys, but you must learn from them failures. In life, we will all fall down, every single one of us. And it's not about falling down. We're going to do that. It's about getting up. I want you to remember, always be kind. In every choice you make, I've seen you do it so many times, just be kind to yourself and to each other. All the students have been busy in the run-up to graduation. Aston, Dylan, I pledge to listen to your point of view in a calm way and not automatically assume the worst. As well as preparing pledges to one another... Dominic, coming up! The boys have been writing poems inspired by their time at summer school. A poem for my mum. It's heaven with my mum. She has sky blue eyes and brown hair. And she has a nice smile and laugh. She is my angel. She is my protector. She is my mum. Well done, Dom. Champ, absolute champ. Have a seat. Have a seat. I love her. She is so very kind. If I had a little blip, she would never really mind. I remember when she took me to the park. The trees were dancing and the dogs barked. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yeah? Well done. Brilliant audience. I pledge to you that I'm going to stay calm to listen more to you. To become a stronger person and to love you even more and more. To spend less time on the computer, build on the relationship between me and Helen, so hopefully things will be better for you. My pledge is not to be grumpy all of the time, just a little bit of the time, and to be a better daddy. Oh, Mr Drew, what can I do? Miss Skinner made me a winner. Mr Grist is on my Christmas list. From Mr Volante, I learnt plenty. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all. I really, really had a ball. Oh, well done. Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Last to read his poem is Clark, who's gone to extra lengths to prepare something special for his performance. Okay. Round of applause for Clark! I turned into a dragon, my eyes glowing red, the power of the gods in me. My wings split through my skin, glowing white, I found I got angry. I turned into a dragon with the power of wind and ice. I was fast as a plasma blast. I turned into a dragon. Everybody screamed, he's turned into a dragon. I stomp my feet, I chomp my meat. They'll sing a happy song to try and change me back. I fall over and smack my head, but change back for time to go to bed. It's been a tough four weeks, but each of the parents and every one of the boys have graduated from summer school. I feel incredibly proud to have been part of our summer school. Boys, I look at you and I feel very, very proud of every single one of you. And the one thing I do know at the end of our four weeks together is, is that every single one of you and every single one of your parents goes away from this summer school in a position of knowing how to be better at what they do. On that note, we are done. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Graduation over, it's time for the boys and their parents to pack up and say their goodbyes. What we've been taught works, and I have done it down here, and 
that's the way it's going to be from now on. There's a lot of things I can draw on um, that I can take from this whole experience that I will use and I won't ever forget this. If you'd needed them to be perfect at the end of this, you'd have had to do four years, not four weeks. But each and every one of these boys, they've all improved in their own way for the better. They really are amazing kids. There's no malice in them. There's no sort of vindictive behaviour. They are, in my opinion, some very, very special boys. And it's just important now that they are able to go and realise the potential and obviously go back to school with the tools that we've given them. Wow. No, I'm really going to miss you, Tom. And I say I will keep in touch, I promise you. When I get home, it's going to be a different Christina. It's going to be a um, new me. Let me out of here! I enjoyed taking part in some of your lessons, Sam. <laughs> I love his honesty. <laughs> <laughs> I feel proud of a large amount that we've achieved. The fact that these boys can do what they've managed to do at the end of this process has got to be seen as progress. If we can have reduced the tension, if we can reduce the stress for their parents and generally make things better for them, then we've done a good job.